Meow. For some people, hearing such a sound would inspire delight. Soft yet fluffy and cuddly. There are good reasons why people keep cats as pets. But there are some people who are not fans of our feline counterparts. And in Spartown, that is a matter of survival. In 2007, an outbreak occurred in Spartown. A virus, which at the time was of unknown origin. This virus swept through the town like a plague and infected all who encountered it. The virus was a humanoid organism which identified itself as Dr. Dulu. You might be surprised that something resembling a human was a carrier of such a plague. On the outside, people would just assume they are a pleasant yet eccentric vet. A regular human. But what if I told you that they were not human? Not the host, but the living embodiment of that virus. The doctor was never infected to begin with. They are the infection. They are not human and never were. Case file 2015. Doolittle syndrome. Appearance. Dr. Doolittle appears to be a white male in his late 50s. He has a rotund appearance and is always smiling. He wears a purple plaid jacket with a red vest, white shirt, purple tie, and brown plaid trousers with black oxfords. Additionally, he wears a black stovepipe top hat and carries an oak walking cane which he uses while in transit. Description of case. Doolittle syndrome is what we label it as. When a person encounters Dr. Doolittle, they become infected and undergo a transformation. All it takes is to be around them for a short while. The amount of exposure differs from person to person, but the rate of infected is 100%. The transformation is quite disturbing. The first 48 hours is the incubation phase. During this time, the infected will become lax and distant. They will cut off all contact with other people and isolate themselves in their homes. They will not eat or drink anything in this period. After the 48 hours have passed, they will start to shake uncontrollably and twist and turn their body into horrifying shapes. One would think at first glance that they were a contortionist. During this phase, dubbed as the mutilation phase, and for good reason, the infected opens their mouth at a 180 degree angle. All their teeth shoot out of the mouth, across the room, and their limbs start retracting as their bones start crunching until all that remains of the body is just a bloody husk. In its place now resides an animal. The animal varies, but from what we've learned so far, it can be animals you'd expect to see in a zoo or animals you'd keep at home as pets. The animals also can communicate with the doctor and additionally with staff through mounted receivers. The conversations had with the animals are mostly incoherent and consist mostly of them complaining of a variety of symptoms and being in pain. They also beg for drugs similar to the ones the doctors give them, but we do not comply. You wouldn't want these animals as pets. They aren't animals. They just look like animals. What they really are is undetermined, as we have been unable to obtain a sample but their main diet consists of unknown drugs given out by Dr. Doolittle and whatever they can get their teeth into. They are regarded as dangerous, but can be stopped like any other animal. Unfortunately, they too can tr transmit Doolittle syndrome. Because of this, we have built a giant wall around the entire town to contain the virus. Additionally, we cannot send staff into the town to dispose of the bodies due to the doctors seeking them out as soon as they enter the town. The doctor is immune to all forms of attack. Nothing we've tried so far has affected his pursuit of staff within the town. Due to this, we avoid sending personnel on site. Instead, we have drones observing the town. Repurposed cars that serve as our arries within the town. Dr. Doolittle and the animals do not engage with the ro remote controlled rust buckets that endlessly busy the roads of Spa Town, which works to our advantage. 
but it has been stated on record that if we try to remove any of the bodies within Spartown with the driverless cars, both the doctor and the other animals will hunt it down until the car ceases to remain functional. Other methods have been somewhat successful in removing the bodies from Spartown, but if the doctor does determine that they cannot stop retrieval, the bodies evaporate and provide no viable samples. It is under great speculation that the unknown drugs given out by the doctor are made by some unknown machine. Due to these drugs resembling commonplace items, such as sunscreen, ointment, pills, honey, lemons, milk, tea bags, among others. These drugs are taken from the doctor's inside coat pockets and given to the animals as these drugs are required for the animals to survive. If the animals do not receive these drugs every 24 hours, they will attack any life form near them and proceed to consume them until there's nothing left. If they cannot find anything to consume within 48 hours of last receiving the drugs, they die. Unfortunately, their bodies are still contagious after death. When the virus was first made known to us, many people became infected and the doctor couldn't keep up with the dosage, so many animals perished, and now their corpses are scattered around the town, never de decaying. Now there is a manageable number of animals for the doctor to care for, and the doctor keeps busy with administering their daily dosage. Currently, Dr. Doolittle and Doolittle Syndrome are contained within the town due to the swift action of a staff member of BLAST, residing within the town at the time of the infection. That staff member has since passed due to Doolittle Syndrome. End case file.